So you don't have to see how you play. You can aim the angular suppressing grass also if it is severe. Okay. Otherwise, what you do? What you can do? There are some grasses you can use for you know, these thyroids. If there is increased thyroid hormones, you can use some grasses for that. I don't remember the names. Yeah. 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 You use the same grass. No, no, you use the same grass. You use the same grass. But if the intensity is severe, such as the eye symptoms are very severe, then you use the immunosuppressant. In short, so this is the flow chart. If anybody, if there is patho shh, shh. pathogenesis of grace, okay, clear? You can draw this diagram also. How these antibodies go to the eye, yes. go to the thyroid, and you know cause the increased formation of T3, T4, increased sympathetic stimulation. Yes. So this shows you everything, huh? how yes. it happens. And the pre-typical B-sitigma which occurs, it is also due to increased glycosamine and glycosamine. Okay. So the reason for the edema in the Graves disease is increased glycosamine and glycosamine. This is the morphology. Yesterday we discussed it. And last plan for beefy rat. Microscopic, there will be hyperplasia of the SNR epithelium. And reduced store, stored collide and there will be scalopy because of resorption of the colloid. And lymphocytes you can find because it is an autoimmune disease. Yes. So lymphocytes will be there in the These are the clinical features of thyroid. Enlargement, brewing. If I find anybody speaking now, out. Last one. Last. Ophthalmopathy, these all you know, huh? why it is ugly. In critical basidema, it will have thickening and hyperpigmentation of the skin. It will be indurated or it will be thickened. Diagnosis, more T3, T4 and decrease in the DS. And there will be radioactive iodine uptake because it is active, the gland is active. So moving on with the thyroidite. I am sorry, but it is very big the lecture. So I have to cover each and everything. Uh, we'll finish after that. Today you will excuse me because I try to finish on time. But unfortunately, the lecture is very big. You know, every non and these all the diseases are important. Grains, goiters, thyroiditis, everything is important. Because Hashimoto is very, very important. I will discuss Hashimoto in a nice day, but the others we can leave it to you. So these are the causes. Yesterday we said infectious thyroiditis, which is painful. Subacute granulomatous, which is painful. Hashimoto may be painless. Subacute lymphocytic is painless. Then there is Redux thyroiditis. There is palpation thyroiditis. Sometimes the patient comes to the clinician. He palpates. Like the medical students. The clinician palpates. They will go on palpating. One student comes to palpate. And then palpate. So ultimately, he will have inflammation of the thyroid. Because some of the students may not, might not be gentle. So he will have palpation, palpation thyroid. This is vigorous palpation which will destroy the thyroid gland. Destruction of the follicles, it will lead to granulomatous inflammation in the, in the thyroid gland. So this is palpation thyroid. So it can be so confused. It can be confused with this one. But that has a different etiology, the viral infection. So Hashimoto, chronic lymphocytic thyroid is the need. More in females, 20 is to 1 ratio, 45 to 65 at an older age. It is painless enlargement 
and initially there might be hyperthyroidism due to destruction of the follicles and release of the stored coli which is also known as Hashi toxicosis it will be followed by the hypothyroidism okay only transient hypothyroidism will be there so this is the commonest cause in the areas where iodine is sufficient so if i say the question is like this what is the commonest cause in iodine sufficient areas what is the commonest cause of hypothyroidism in iodine sufficient areas it is the hashimoto thyroidism commonest cause of hypothyroidism is iodine deficiency okay if i say iodine sufficient areas what is the commonest cause it is the hashimoto thyroiditis and complication is lymphoma b cell lymphoma can develop because too many lymphocytes are coming they can go out of control and form a lymphoma so complication also you should remember these are very important things very important mind you this line transient hashi toxicosis complication lymphoma very important so why this is occurring hashimoto thyroid this is autoimmunity this is again due to autoimmune destruction of the thyroid cells again the cd4 helper cells which are there they are involved and they will lead to the formation of auto antibodies okay what are the auto antibodies we will discuss genetic factor again dr3 and dr5 dr3 in grains of grains here also so in the families you can find one patient having grapes and another having hashi so this is the connections and they can be associated with other autoimmune diseases also so this is a diagram so there is something wrong with this t helper cell no it is going to recognize the thyroid and react against this how it reacts it reacts by three things either it will cause increased formation of interferon gamma which activates the macrophages which can directly kill the cells isn't it secrete the enzyme and kill the cells or it activates the cd8 cell which is cytotoxic cell which can also kill the cells through fast ligand fast ligand fast and fast ligand direct ha direct killing of the cell fast and fast ligand is attached and they undergo apoptosis so this is another mechanism or they cause b cell stimulation so plasma cells are formed they will form the antibodies these antibodies then cause cytotoxicity which is also known as antibody dependent cell cytotoxicity which is through the nk cell this is another mechanism so there is autoimmunity the first cell which will be involved is the t helper cell so this t helper cell will stimulate the cd8 cell or cause the formation of the antibodies or stimulate the macrophage all these things will lead to destruction of the cell this is how the pathogenesis of hashimoto is clear because this is important to understand so helper cell first again helper cell in grave disease but the antibodies are different here in the grave disease they are different they are stimulating antibodies there here they are destroying antibodies so try to understand ha huh? they are destroying so finish the hashimoto now the granular matters yesterday we call granular matters which is also known as subacute okay and not granular matters subacute granular matters or deep cure ones deep cure ones remember the name also more in female 30 to 40 years follows the viral infection painful enlargement may be hyperfunction or hypofunction depend initially may be hyper later on hyper unilateral bilateral self limited within 6 to 8 weeks no need of treatment it will go on off on its own most of the viral infection you know they go off like common cold and other things but it is less frequent than the hashimotos and how you differentiate between the two there are polymorphonuclear cells and there are dendromers in this and this for these two things you will not find in the hashimoto you will find only the mononuclear cell infiltration so polymorphs and granulomas you will find here lymphocytic thyroiditis we finish the dikur one out now we are close we finish subacute lymphocytic we call that was chronic lymphocytic so this is common in the females in the post partum period which one was chronic was hashimoto the other name of hashimoto is chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis this is subacute lymphocytic thyroiditis this is common in females in the postpartum period you know the postpartum period mm -hmm. after the pregnancy unknown etiology may be autoimmune in origin okay again autoimmunity because we find the anti thyroid antibodies in them and it will lead to hyperthyroidism initially which will progress to hypo painless enlargement 
normal grass and you will have lymphocytic infiltration. The last one is redal thyroiditis. What do you mean by redal thyroiditis? Redal thyroiditis, there is more fibrosis in the thyroid. Okay. So fibrosis which is dense and it extends to, you know, it crosses the capsule and extends to the next structure. So it will be very hard extending to the next structures and there will be atrophy of the parenchyma and it will lead to hypothyroidism and it can be because of the hardness it can be mistaken for carcinoma hardness because it is fibrosis yes. so fibrosis will occur in the Hashimoto later on here we get also fibrosis so what is the difference between the difference? since since molecular what the physiology and the physiology is different but clinically and other things you know what is it as I said, here the fibrosis will not be confined to the thyroid. It will be moved to the external yes, or the next structure. Okay? So this is the difference. Etiology again is unknown, but may be autoimmune in origin. Yeah. So this finishes. Thank you so much for giving me extra time.